Today on Encore, the book and film about one of the most uplifting tales of courage and survival in modern times. Five years ago, 33 men were buried in a collapsed mine in Chile. More than a billion people around the world watched as they were finally hauled to freedom after 69 days. The survivors chose to tell their story to one man. He wrote the official accounts, Deep Down Dark, the untold stories of 33 men buried in a Chilean mine and the miracle that set them free. It's been made into a movie starring Juliette Binoche and Antonio Banderas. Let's meet the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and novelist, Hector Tober. Hector, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. Congratulations on your book. First question, how did it come to be you that they wanted to talk to, the miners? Well, the miners had made a pact underground that they would all tell their story together. Uh, after they got out, they hired some lawyers. The lawyers hired a talent agency uh, in New York, William Morris Endeavor, and um, they needed a novelist and a journalist. Um, they chose me. I went to Chile, introduced myself to the miners, and won their confidence. And, I mean, you were a journalist and a novelist, and from Central America. Did you feel equipped then to do it, or were you quite surprised about how difficult it was? Well, um, you know, I'd been to Chile before. I used to cover Chile for the Los Angeles Times. Um, but more importantly, I'm from a working class background. My parents are immigrants from Guatemala. Uh, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles. And so I've been writing about working people my whole life. And I just felt really close to them almost immediately. They just reminded me a lot of my father, these men, uh, hardworking people taking risks to make a better life for their families. And there was this crazy media frenzy. I mean, right. that we all watched and but you must have discovered things that we didn't see. I mean, tell us about maybe one or two things that you discovered that were quite shocking to you. Well, yes, there were several secrets the men were keeping as a group. The most important and the biggest one was how divided they were uh, the very first night they were trapped. Several of the men stole the emergency food supplies and uh, they went hungrier. They starved a little more than they would have because a few of the men broke into an emergency cabinet of food and stole a good, a good portion of the supplies and ate them that very first night. That was one thing. There was also a, a man who was supposed to be the leader down there. He was the uh, shift supervisor. He abdicated his responsibilities, according to several of the men. So these were things that the world did not know and the secrets that they kept for months afterwards. One thing that we did find out, though, is about Yoni and Barrios, who became famous when his yes. wife and his mistress fought at the rescue site. And how did you decide to include these very personal stories of the miners? Well, it seemed to me that I realized after a while that this really was a love story, a collective love story, that all the men who went into the mine went in the mine because they had families that they loved, women that they loved, uh, wives that they loved. And um, so it was very important to explain to the reader why it is that they went into the mine, how complicated their lives were even beforehand. Uh, Yoni uh, was a man who could not decide between his mistress and his girl and his wife. He lived actually in both houses off and on before the mine accident. So he had already a very complicated life, like many of the men do, like many people do. He, he did decide, though, in the end, didn't he? Yes, he <laughs> went and uh, his girlfriend greeted him when he was uh, rescued, uh, much to the chagrin of his wife. Uh, and he became world famous because of that. So writing the book, um, how did it affect your kind of view on humankind versus nature? Well, I think I learned that uh, in this kind of situation, almost everybody has something to contribute. You know, there was one guy who uh, found a way to make the lights work underground so they wouldn't be in total darkness. Um, there was another man who was very humble but emerged as a leader. Uh, he had this passion for living, Mario Sepulveda, who's going to be played by Antonio Banderas in the movie. Uh, and there were people who told stories. Um, there were men who were weak at one point but then stronger the next. Uh, and I also I think I learned a lot about the power of family. These men, when faced with death, starving to death in the dark, what did they want? They wanted to go back home because they knew home and the people who loved them were the best thing about their lives, about themselves. And the film is coming out in September later this year. It's called The 33, and it stars Antonio Banderas, as you say, and Juliette Binoche. How much, how much have you been involved in that? Because it's based on your book. Yes, well, uh, I had the good fortune. Uh, as I was writing the book, I was also working with the screenwriters and with the producers. Several of the trips I took to Chile, I was working alongside the film people. Uh, I got to see uh, the film itself evolve. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful uh, production. It's going to be a, a real testament to the miners, very much true to the emotional truth of the story, which, I, as I said, is a love story, really. Okay, well, our reporters in Chile were on the film set, and they sent us this report. 
Juliette Binoche gazes transfixed on the rescue operation as a huge drill burrows into the bowels of the earth. The French actress plays Maria Segovia, the sister of one of the 33 miners trapped for 69 days in the San Jose mine. She always knew they were alive. She never gave up. She knew they were alive and that gave her faith and strength. Nothing stopped her. Brazilian actor Rodrigo Santoro plays the Chilean mining minister who coordinated the rescue effort. It's not about being a minister. It's about being very optimistic to never give up until the end. Rounding out the all-star cast is Antonio Banderas. The Spanish actor plays the lead, and his parts were mainly filmed in Colombia. But back in Chile, the real-life heroes of the story haven't been forgotten. Some of the 33 miners have been hired to help out, like Dario Segovia, Maria's brother. I don't know how to explain it. It's like a dream for me, for all my fellow miners and Chilean people. Hollywood is making a movie about us, and in Chile. Juliette Binoche is playing your sister. What do you think of her acting? Wonderful. I saw her playing my sister, and she does it really well. Of course they don't look like each other, but it's wonderful the way she takes on the role of my sister. Juliette Binoche is hoping the film will not only bring the tragic story to the big screen, but will draw attention to current mining conditions in Chile. Now, some of the laws have improved in big mines, but that's not the case in the smaller ones. Miners' working conditions are still very precarious, and that's not normal in such a rich country as Chile. The 33 is a Hollywood drama that's part fiction, part reality. We heard um, one of the miners there, Dario Segovia, saying he's happy the story's being made into a film. Do you think they all feel like that? Oh, I think that um, they know what they lived is very special. They survived this incredible collapse of the mine, a kind of earthquake that they lived underground. No one was killed. Um, they uh, almost starved to death. Many of them lost uh, 10, 20 kilos uh, in the time they were there. And um, they all came to the surface, uh, became heroes, international heroes. I mean, all of them, I think, when I spoke with them, they had the sense of awe and wonderment for what happened to them. Juliet Binoche talks about working conditions in the mines. Do you think the crisis, the book that you've written, the film, have they, has, have they together improved the situation in the mines? Well, I think the accident itself, the disaster, the 1.2 billion people with their eyes focused on Chile, uh, really forced the Chilean government to improve the monitoring of these small and medium-sized mines. Uh, but beyond that, I think it's really drawn attention to the risks that miners around the world uh, take every day when they go to earn their livings underground. And in the aftermath of the rescue, some of the men actually unbelievably returned to mining. Um, Victor Samorier, though, he um, kind of returned to a destitute life. Edison mm -hmm. Penner battled alcoholism. Some yes. focus on um, capitalizing their experience. Did the miners find meaning in their lives from that experience? What happened? Or is that something that just happens in the movies? No, I think that the vast majority of them, in fact, all of them, learned what was really important in their lives. Uh, they learned that family is the most important thing. They learned to value the time they spend with their families. One of the miners, Raul Bustos, had also survived a tsunami a few months earlier. Uh, he told me that he just learned to take life a little slower, not to be so much in a hurry. Um, yes, many of them are having uh, emotional problems. And in fact, they're kind of the same emotional problems they had before the accident took place. Um, Edison Pena has really battled with alcoholism. Yes, it's, it's true. Um, but I think that the majority of them have, after getting over the period when they thought they were going to be rich, they now realize that, um, that, that work uh, is something that really helps heal them and that helps keep their families together. And what happened finally with the compensation five years on? Well, the, uh, there's still a civil suit pending against the mine owners. Uh, the new Chilean administration has added uh, a $600 approximately a month pension for each one of the miners, which is about half of a monthly salary. Uh, and some of the older miners have now retired with government uh, retirement benefits. Um, so I think most of them are doing economically as well as they were before the accident took place.
And they obviously became very close um, in the mine. Are they still close from what you know? I think some of them are close. Um, some of them have now antipathies, uh, uh, misunderstandings, uh, disagreements that have uh, become stronger over the years. Uh, there's some things that happened down underground that I describe in my book that have made uh, some of the men bitter enemies to this day. Uh, however, every time that they get together, it's a, a band of brothers uh, hugging each other. Uh, so I think it's a little bit of both. And the closing line of um, chapter nine, Cavern of Dreams, is a quote from one of the miners who's the informal pastor. Yes. Um, it's when the, the drill broke through and he says, God exists. From talking to the miners, from watching what happened, I mean, do you think this was a rescue down to human ingenuity or was it divine intervention or was it both? Was it a miracle? Well, I think it was both. I think it was an incredible effort by the Chilean government and the Chilean people to rescue these men. Uh, but it was also uh, the fact that they survived and they kept united those first 17 days was attributed to their inner strength, to their faith. Um, after the first night, they prayed every day. Um, they, they, at some of them saw the accident as punishment. They thought God was punishing them, um, and they promised to become better men. Uh, the pastor, uh, he led uh, these prayers. He told stories that he remembered from the Bible. And so after all of these days of prayer, to finally see this drill bit break through, uh, explosively breakthrough uh, for them. It was uh, it was this divine moment, and that's when he said, "Dios existe." God exists. Okay, Hector, thank you so much for coming in and speaking to us on France 24. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And deep down dark, the untold stories of 33 men buried in a Chilean mine and the miracle that set them free has just been translated into French. The film, The 33, is due out in September. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.